Hello everyone. Happy week of October 30th into November 5th. This is the Scorpio new moon reading. Happy Halloween to all of you as well. It will be tomorrow. And let's see what's in store for us with the Oracle and Tarot reading. Clear. So the energy that I'm picking up on heavily is this frequency of kind of our our deepest excuse me, our deepest um, wounds, if you will, but not necessarily wounds, but like our, the side of our darkness that we hide from, even like, because it's Halloween energy as well, there's a lot of the scariness that comes to the surface, right? Like there, everywhere we look, there's a haunted house or there scary decorations and that darker side of it. And where we're actually at, even in terms of the astrology, Every time around this year, the veil is very thin, and it's also where we have more contact to the elements of our universe. So taking that as you will, there could also be more of your awareness coming online. There could be more of your abilities. Maybe you're seeing and having visions. Maybe you're hearing spirits since the veil is very thin, right? So it's taking time for yourself so that you also can honor these scarier, darker aspects that may be easy to push down or to hide from other people or hide from yourself. And how can you honor them? How can you, I'm hearing even in this way of like go through your own haunted house of these places that may feel like otherwise you would never admit them, but we're being given the opportunity to see those darker aspects with a new new perspective, a new awareness. Um, okay, we already got four cards flying out, but I feel guided to keep shuffling. <laughs> what card? Okay, let's start from there. So the first card that flipped up was Galactic Synergy. And it makes sense in this way too because there's a resurgence happening with how we connect to our depths, right? And that's that scorpionic energy of being very well aware of what is like our sacredness and also what we do not want to share, like our deep vulnerability, the things that we only share with the very few people in our lives. The affirmation for galactic synergy is my DNA is aligned to the galactic synergy of the universe. My heart pulses to the galactic beat of divine order. So there's a reason that your darkness is coming up. There's a reason that we're in this time frame of Halloween right now when it's in that connectivity to our, our darkness, our synergy, our... Um, I'm hearing even like the depths of our heart are being brought to the surface and the cards that fell underneath everything too it's funny we get the unity consciousness so when we find our wholeness we're finding unity within all aspects of ourselves and the collective consciousness the affirmation is all is connected to the divine source of my soul's true heart the more i love myself the more unity i see in the world around me and within all of this, I'm not saying to share every single aspect with yourself to everyone, right? There's no need for us to do that when we know there's certain people that are not in our sacred circle to know our sacredness, right? And I don't think you even have to go and watch scary movies in order to feel like you're connecting with that scarier aspect or bringing light to those parts that feel scary to share. I, for one, am not a scary movie person. <laughs> I, I don't even like thrillers. I already have a lot of kind of nightmares sometimes, if you will, or really dark dreams, um, which I have been told that it's clearing a lot of other timelines and collectives and just narratives. So I, I don't need added on examples of, <laughs> of scary stuff, but I'm hearing in this way, like, how can we even bring some humor to that, the scary aspects or the stuff we may fear the most? How can we bring some joy? Because then that's actually when we're bringing some unity into those states of consciousness, even like our deepest fears are here for a reason, but it doesn't mean we have to keep feeding them and fearing them and thinking that they're not part of that unity at that same time, right? 
And under that, we got the listen to your heart card again, the number two. There's patience involved when we listen and tune in, especially when it comes to those sacred parts of our being, these parts that I'm hearing in this way too. It's like maybe you haven't really shared with people how connected you feel or how spiritual you are or if you get visions, it's maybe, I know for me, I felt very um, afraid to even channel or read cards for people because it's so like oh you're hippy dippy or all of these like ways we can put down even a simple aspect of other things right we there's always a contrast within every community or every state of identity or what we enjoy but we got this uh star seed activation so there's more of your soul self coming in for us now with the veil being very thin we're not focusing. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Again, the fail being very thin is also when we can get the most downloads. We can hear our higher self more. We can also, I'm hearing this way, it's being aware of where we actually might be distracting ourselves from this, the parts of tuning in. And I'm hearing in this way and I'm getting a visual of kind of, and this is just a broad example. So take this as you will. But they're even showing me like, the scariness of Halloween, if you will, can also sometimes be a distraction for us actually tuning into something deeper. And it could also just keep us in a state of fear if we're watching all of these different scary movies or going to all these events that have a lot of scary, gory things. But there's actually possibly, not for everyone, right, a reason to actually ask ourselves what we need more and more during this time, even more so. Um, yeah, take that as you will. It was an interesting vision I was getting. The affirmation for starseed act activation is, <laughs> I call back all galactic fragments of my original soul signature, merging all starseed lifetimes into this now moment. Excuse me. So I know um, from last week's channeling with Arcturians, there was a lot of, and even kind of brings into this galactic synergy energy, there's a lot of galactic activation for us and this merging of our galacticness. And what does that even mean, right? Our galactic energy. To me, I see it as we're more than just human, right? We live in a universe that's, we're on a planet floating through outer space. Of course, there's more to us. There's more to our soul, where we've come from and... So that could be from the stars, right? And you don't have to necessarily say like, I'm a star seed or whatever that means for you. But it's just knowing that there's more to our human existence than what we're led to believe and what we're maybe even allowing ourselves to believe, right? Because we also got the quantum leap card. So it takes faith and trust to anchor into these new perspectives, to trust that we can quantum leap and I'm hearing even what we may fear the most, we can leap and shift it very quickly into actually something that is our strength. Um, I'm getting, for example, even like um, the fear of heights. Like maybe you have a super huge fear of heights and it's not necessarily allowing yourself to like put yourself on high buildings all the time in order to not feel afraid. But I'm hearing metaphorically what can then also transform into like if you're afraid of heights, maybe is it that you're afraid of also your own success or being so high up in the air that you don't feel grounded enough? Is it a fear of death, right? Is it, there's more to the, just the fear of itself. There's some other underlying way, but how can we also trust that being afraid of your own heights, right? Your own, what am I getting at here? <laughs> The fear that we fear the most can actually bring us the most, um, I'm hearing like that quantum leap energy. So maybe it is this rooted fear, not just the fear of heights, because even if you think that like you're on a high building and what else is coming underneath that, right? So maybe it's actually you're afraid of success and afraid of doing certain things. So the quantum leap is actually that you can trust that you are meant to be successful in what you care about that brings you success will be safe and even create more stability and not just push you over the building. Like it's not that you build up so high and then fall, right? It's that you build up so high and you're growing even stronger within your height of your own, I'm hearing even that state of unity consciousness 
bringing it all together, bringing in this quantum leap energy. Because I keep getting like the energy of someone flying, so that's why I brought in that fear of heights. Take this all as you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a very potent time right now, and um, there might even be some ancestors, uh, family members that come through to speak to you or that you want to connect with, and um, maybe even journaling or going to places that feel more nurturing to connect with those souls and those parts of your being will be very beneficial through this Scorpio new moon and the Hall Halloween energy season. Um, let's go into the tarot. I actually feel guided for one more oracle card, actually. What do we need to know? What else is there? Ooh. Oh, we got the air card. <laughs> I tune in. Sorry. <laughs> I am in tune and connected to the highest aspects of non-physical reality. My mind and thoughts are clear and at peace. Which... I love this element of air because everything is non-physical at the same time, right? Physical, non-physical, but spirits especially are part of that air element. So I'm hearing again, like there, if you're feeling connected to someone that maybe have crossed over, it's not a coincidence. And we're being reminded it through this air element card to trust that that non-physicalness is a part of who you are and that you can tune into it during this time especially. It's always available to us, but we're even more um, connected at this time. I feel guided to say if you would like some help with tuning into those that you have lost, I can definitely support that assistance and guidance. I've channeled many um, like family members for people or lovers or all different aspects. Um, it's quite beautiful. It can be very emotional, but also very powerful. Ooh, ooh, wow. Well, okay, well, we got the death card. <laughs> so again, their fear of death, I'm hearing this way, is actually being a rebirth for us. And maybe it's to focus during this time of the Scorpio energy of where are we also grieving an old part of ourself that we're having to let go and allowing it to transform into this alchemy. But I'm hearing in this way too, there's a lot that our ancestors even want us to know right now to also congratulate us on because we're not only helping our own life and then the generations to come, but we're helping the generations that have already come forward and gone on, right? It's a quantum energy and that's where I'm even seeing this quantum leap is even seeing this quantumness of our everyday lives, it's all happening now. The present moment holds everything. It's not just this tangibility of this moment. It is past, present, and future. Um, I'm even seeing like holding kind of um, like a ceremony or putting an altar kind of they do with the, the Day of the Dead energy. Wow, we got the tower card again. So a huge transform—I can't say it. True. Transformation is happening, and at the same time, we're rebuilding. We're celebrating what we've accomplished, taking the time to honor that. But also, I'm hearing in this way what we're letting go of more than ever before through this death and rebirth, this tower, this shifting of perspectives. And maybe if you're going through a huge transformation right now, asking yourself what you need to know from it. Because there's always more to uncover, more to understand. It's not always just the surface level of things. I'm being pulled to the air card. There's a lot happening non-physically for us. I don't know why she doesn't want to. There we go. <laughs> Still having trouble sometimes with my new camera. Um... But there's more happening behind the, the scenes and under the surface. And that's also that scorpionic energy, right? Sometimes the Scorpio energy can feel very calculated, but also very um, have like a plan underneath 
what anyone can see. There's a lot happening under that surface level. We got the High Priestess card. So there's your own alchemy and your own awareness really coming online and taking your power back, taking the reins of your life, the co-creation of your, I'm hearing sovereignty, trusting that it is coming into fruition, seeing her third eye really opening up here in this card, your vision, your, I'm even seeing that through the hand opening up, you might even begin to do a lot of energy healing, even unknowingly on yourself. Like I felt the hands really heating up, this healing coming in through the awareness of the third eye and tra changing into a whole new state of hearing your voices from the truth of that, of what it is, your actual truth of your soul coming through and not just these old voices these old inner critics because in that way too you're we got the king or the knight of voices and the queen of voices so there's this balancing of masculine and feminine of communication within your being and maybe that's even what your ancestors are bringing you which is so beautiful but also in the same way we got the four of emotions where we can focus on the state of what we don't have and kind of ignore what we do have, which there's always a reason to feel whatever we're feeling, right? But I'm hearing even in this way, it could be also that we're grieving a loss and grieving it so deeply that we don't feel connected to the universe in a way that we feel maybe betrayed by the universe, but yet there is these cups still here supporting us, this prosperity. So know too, if you're feeling in that state of loss, it's okay to also feel a little numb, to trust that there is a reason to feel what you're feeling and that there's a hope coming in of like, there is still so much to be grateful for, but it's okay if you're in it, but we don't wanna stay in it, right? Forever, we're not meant to stay. We're always meant to change and have that fluidity. But these tower moments, these sudden transformations can bring in that deep polarity that I'm being even called to like, that could be one of our, our activations deeper into our soul self, into our starseed energy. It could also help us listen better to our hearts and feel more connected because a lot of the times grief brings in even more connection to our soul, to our galacticness and to our unity. It helps us realize too that just because we lose someone in the physical or things change doesn't mean that we're actually disconnected. There is an illusion to separation, right? There's a unity consciousness we can always tap into. And we might need others to help us get to those points of connection, right? But I'm hearing it, it is happening for all of us in our own way. The high priestess coming in to show us our power to reignite ourselves and in the rune energy around her, there could be a lot of like, um, like I'm hearing like Irish folklore or from your ancestry. There could be a lot of uh, past lives coming forward. Maybe you're having dreams and visions of these times in your life where you were um, even a princess or a priestess or <laughs> whatever. Um, they're coming up for a reason. So maybe writing down what's come up for you or what situation or narrative is being brought to the surface. So that you can also see the gifts, the lessons that are coming up from what you may see as just a coincidence. Because again, we get a big emphasis on the voices, which is that air energy, right? When we take the time to tune in, we hear our wisdom. We hear our free spirit energy coming forward more and more. Yeah, it's a big week. It's a big energetic shift for all of us. I'm hearing even a collective shift. Um, I know there's a lot of political stuff going on this week too. Um, so maybe it's also just taking the time to trust that more unity will come into the collective, into the states of consciousness, even if we feel that this tower moment and these deaths are pulling in a different direction, but really it is redirecting our path in ways that we may not understand right now. 
because again, there's so much happening behind the scenes under the surface in the quantum. <laughs> Anything else we need to know? Ooh, okay, there's a lot of cards. <laughs> we got the moon card, beautiful. So I'm hearing in this way, especially because it's a new moon, it becomes that darker subconscious moon where we can plant new seeds, we can allow there to be that resurgence, right? So maybe even making the intention of connecting more to your galactic energy, feeling more connected to source energy with the moon's darkness to help us actually cultivate through our own darkness. And we get the two of voices, but in reverse. So it's that flipping of the coin, we may feel that everything is so spooky and scary, but underneath we're cultivating gold or cultivating our heart. And we can decide which perspective we want to really acknowledge as our truth. Because the more that we decide what is our truth, we can celebrate our emotions. We can decide what we're bringing in. It's like this galactic download of the sacred geometry coming in to us, coming in for us to connect with and we're our sense of power is really being heightened this week we're stepping into this inspiration and the emotional state of how we're showing up how we're even handling things within our co-creativeness like i'm hearing our magician energy so yeah take some time to just give yourself space i'm hearing more than anything because again there's a lot of distractions right now there's all, not just the Halloween distraction, but there could just be a lot of distractions in the media. There could be a lot of narratives that cause us to feel fight or flight and to worry and to uh, question source energy. It can make us question ourselves. Um, maybe something we thought was going a certain way ends up being a totally different and we feel like we've failed, right? So please be gentle with yourself always. Um, but there, even through this kind of intensity, there is so much light coming in. There's so much um, like up leveling happening for us. So um, just know that even if it feels like it's chaotic, there might be again a lot happening under the surface for your highest good when it may not feel like it. So I hope this resonated in some way, this reading for this week. Happy Scorpio new moon. And again, as always, I will have the Oracle Deck sound baths right after this, a little clips of each one. If you felt connected to the Oracle Deck, it is available for purchase and I ship uh, internationally. It has, each card has a sound bath. There's 11 guided meditations and there's over eight hours of sound music, sound bath music. And you also get a free 30 minute, 30 minute <laughs> reading with me. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I love you all so much. I will see you next week and happy November, which is crazy. Enjoy. I hope the holidays as they're revving up can be calming for you and fun and that you can feel this unity consciousness. And I feel like more and more unity is coming forward, even if there's a lot that does not feel good. A lot of uncertainty, right? So... Yeah. I love you all so much. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.